This is BYU Cougars Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Big O Tires presents On the Rubber, a look at both teams' pitching numbers. Brought to you by Big O Tires, the team you trust. For K-State, Jackson Wentworth has gone through three innings, giving up one hit, one run. It was earned. It was a home run from Parker Goff, striking out five. No walks, no wild pitches, no hit batsman for Wentworth. For BYU, Ben Hansen, three innings, five hits, two runs, both earned. No strikeouts. Has given up base on balls. Nothing wild and no hit batsman. So we're top four in a 2-1 ball game. That was on the rubber, brought to you by Big O Tires, the team you trust. For the Cougs, it'll be Anderson, Jones, and Reuter here in the top of the fourth. And Luke swings and misses. Luke struck out swinging in the first. Luke looking to reach in a fourth consecutive game. That's dirted to him. One and one the count from Jackson Wentworth. Luke batting 247 on the season. But that number skies all the way to 368 when he leads off an inning. He leads off the fourth for BYU. Gets a piece on strike two. And that deflection hit the catcher. That's not fun. Pelletier. And Pelletier is saying something along the lines of Sacre Bleu. <laughs> As he is now 0 for 3 in the series at the plate and now takes yeah, one uh, behind the plate. That's one. Yeah. Area. That's why you don't want to be a catcher, right? You just got to be tougher than everyone else. That was a particularly sensitive yes. Yes, it hit was. off the deflection. So their baseball trainer's out to have a word with uh, Rafael Pelletier. Brief delay here. That was in a foul tip that uh, popped up and hit Pelletier in his crouch the French word you just said, what did that mean? Like, um, oh darn it. Oh. Yeah. Literally translated, it means holy blue, but no one ever says that. One ball, two strikes to Luke Anderson. BYU's walks and stolen bases and doubles leader on the year, Luke Anderson. Five home runs on the season, 11 for his BYU career. The second baseman, Luke Anderson, on a 1-2 count. From Jackson Wentworth, who kicks and deals. That'll be hit in the air to center field. Brendan Jones will drift back to the track and look it into the leather for out number one. A good swing. Hit it hard. Just, uh, that's the one area of the field that it just doesn't really travel. Balls tend to die there, don't yes, they? Yes, they do. Crew Robinson nearly got one out in center field last night. It was caught about a half foot below the yellow line. The Cougs did clear the yard twice last night and once already this evening. The home run hitter Parker Goff down the seventh spot. We're in the three hole right now with Easton Jones. He fouls the first pitch back to the padding. Oh, jo- one to Jones. We need Jonesy to get a home run this weekend. 15 sounds nice, doesn't it? He is BYU's home runs leader at 14. Oh, one. That'll be a ground ball. Sliding stab by Parsons at third. Long throw, and he makes it in time to get Jones. A nice 5-3 for K-State. Parsons to Bishop. And the grounder to third. Makes it two out here in the fourth. Colin Reuter now batting. Collins reached base in his last three. 0 for 1 tonight. 2 for 6 in the series. Has scored two runs. Solo home run last night again to tie the game in the ninth. Colin takes ball one. Slider missing low and away from Wentworth. That's in the dirt. Ball two. Jackson Wentworth's high pitch count for the year, 98. 2-0. Stays high that fastball three and zero. I think it's the first three and zero count he's been yes, in. I think so. I think it's the first three ball count. Period. Yeah. A four pitch walk. Yeah, Wentworth's strike percentage before that at bat was seventy eight percent tonight. Yeah. He's got the good stuff going tonight. So that was a most unusual at bat. As his first free pass issued, Colin Ruder takes a two out walk. 
Hawks. The tying runs now at first base for BYU. It's 2-1 K-State, top four. Cooper Vest could give the Cougs a lead with one swing. He's got home runs in back-to-back games this week. And extra base hits in seven of his last eight games. A check swing grounder to third with K-State into the shift. And on the 5-3, the throw out of Vest, and that'll be it for BYU in the fourth. And excuse me, one hopper to third base, and it gets the Wildcats out of the inning. So for BYU, no runs, no hits. There were no K-State errors, one left on base. We go bottom four, Wildcats two, Cougars one on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. We are here at Toynton Family Stadium, opened in 1961, rededicated in 2002, renovated and expanded in 2020. Beautiful facility, and most every seat is filled on this Friday night here in Manhattan. K-State, BYU, the Wildcats picked fifth in the Big 12 preseason poll. And could rise as high as fifth this weekend if everything breaks right for them. I was going to say, and they're probably going to finish right there where they were picked. The batter is Chuck Ingram, and he fouls away the first pitch he sees from Ben Hansen. 0-1 on Ingram. Ingram, Pelletier, and Bishop, 7-8-9 hitters here for the Wildcats, who lead 2-1 bottom four. The 0-1 to Ingram. Ground ball into the shift left, and Luke Anderson will handle it. But the shortstop might be, but it'll go as a 4-3 for out number one. I'll tell you what, Greg, Luke has played a really good second base ever since he's been put there this year. Between his outfield and infield play, just one error on the year. You will now go shift right, meaning Crew Robinson playing at second. Luke playing in short right, and Ruder hugs the line at first. The batter played to pull is Rafael Pelletier, left-handed hitting catcher. Now three for his last 35 at the plate. Takes ball one from Ben Hansen. David Bishop on deck. Pelletier grounded out 6-3 in the second, 0-3 in the series with a walk. Count goes to one and one. in the dirt. Ball two, two and one. The middle game of the series is the only game of weekend series in which K-State has a losing record on the season. They have a winning record on their first game and third game of the weekend series, but a losing record in the middle games. See if the Cougs can keep that particular trend alive tonight. The 2-1 and a high fastball is strike two from Hanson. That's that's actually shocking to me because Wentworth is such a good pitcher. Their normal middle guy. Yeah, yep. I wouldn't, wouldn't see him losing a lot of games, but he got four losses on the year. Yeah, he's losing record on the year at three and four. As the count goes full three and two, ball low. Wentworth coming in two tonight. Had gone 62 and two-thirds. He's making just his fifth start of the year, so he's not been an every weekend guy, but certainly the guy they've been using late in the year in their middle games, traditionally a Saturday, a Friday this week. Grounder off the mound will be into the shift, and Crew Robinson will handle and throw out Pelletier easier. So that'll be a 6-3 that plays like a 4-3. And two gone for David Bishop. For bottom four, the Wildcats a 2-1 lead. Two runs on five hits for K-State. BYU's one run coming on its one hit. It was a Parker Goff solo home run in the second. The third inning, pardon me. Both teams scoring one in the third. Wildcats open the scoring one in the first. 2-1, bottom four. Bishop out of the nine spot in the order. Leaned into, but takes ball one. Bishop the first baseman. And he's fielded his position perfectly this year. Error free on the year is Bishop. 1-0. That's striped and lined just beyond the glove of Crew Robinson at short. The sixth hit of the night for K-State is a two-out single for David Bishop. He's now two for six in the series. Yeah, strong kid. It's 107 miles an hour. Just absolute lean you off the bat. 6-3, 215 goes David Bishop out of Marietta, Georgia. And again, played for TCU. So he's gone from purple to purple here in the Big 12. It's been a purple week for BYU, too. They went Grand Canyon to K-State. 
purple-themed teams. You can add Abilene Christian to the purple opponents for BYU this year. A foul to the netting by the top of the order hitter, Brendan Jones. 0-1. Jones, two for two tonight. A pair of singles and a pair of runs scored. He has scored both of the K-State runs in a 2-1 ball game. 0 for 3 last night, 2 for 2 tonight. Brendan Jones batting 298 on the year. So inching toward the 300 mark. 0-1. Foul back away, 0-2. To Brendan Jones, the base path demon for the Wildcats. Jones was last above 500 on April 27th. 0-2. Left-handed hitting, leadoff hitter Jones. Pick pick him off. He's right there. Pick him off. I didn't get the tuck call there. I mean, Bishop was bouncing off, bouncing off, bouncing off. Thought he had it, and Ben never saw it. He just just throwing the ball. He's out by a mile. Mm. 0-2. Breaking pitch. Misses high and away. 1-2. Pete Hughes, head coach of the Wildcats in his sixth season here, 27th overall. He has 815 career wins, 163 with K-State. The 1-2. High, ball two. Previously for Hughes, an assistant at Georgia. Was a head coach at Oklahoma, Virginia Tech, and Boston College. And prior to that, Division III Trinity University. Those are his stops. Has made three NCAA regionals, none though with the Wildcats. The 2 2, with two gone, one on. That's fouled back away. Count stays 2 and 2. He got there to the regionals, that is. Two with Virginia Tech, one with OU. As a student athlete, he was a football player and baseball player at Davidson back in the day. Yeah, Coach Coolball played for him at OU. Hmm. Two balls, two strikes. On Jones, and after an 0-2 opening, it's a 3-2 count. Yeah, and Ben just really can't get a feel for that uh, secondary pitch right now. That was a miss outside for the left-handed hitting Jones. Count full. The runner on first is Bishop. They'll play off of him as he takes off. It'll be a ground ball up the middle to Luke Anderson, or to Crew Robinson. He'll handle in the shift and throw out Brendan Jones. On the 6-3, they played like a 4-3 once again. A shift works for BYU for out number three. We're through four complete for the Wildcats in the fourth. No runs on a single hit, no BYU airs, one left on base. We go top five. 2-1, the Wildcats over the Cougars on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Welcome back to Manhattan. Greg Rubel, BYU Baseball Operations Director. Tuckett Slade, your commentary duo. We're almost halfway home. Top five. Cougs down 2-1 to K-State. Aloy, Goff, Scow do up. Six, seven, eight hitters. Jackson Wentworth stays on the hill just through his 41st pitch. He's pacing for an average night. Two runs, six hits, Wildcats. One run, one hit for BYU. Aloy goes opposite field, and that is going to drop between the second baseman and right fielder. So a blue single for Cohio Aloy. He's now got a hit in each game of the series. Two for six in the series now for Cohio. That just tells you how funny this game is. He hit that off the end of the bat. I'm not going to say the exit speed because it wasn't very hard, <laughs> but it counts as a hit. And you know how many times he's hit 105 mile an hour outs this year? So, it's just, so he's due for one of those. He's got to hit it where they're not. Yep. Second on the team in hits coming into the night. He's fashioning a really nice freshman season. Yeah. The RBI leader, second in hits, now has hits in 11 of his last 15 games. Not bad for a guy who came to BYU to be a pitcher first. Mm. That's what he was recruited as. Hey, they're going to come in and try to pitch, and we're going to you know, give you a chance to hit in the fall. And that got flipped really quickly when you realize the type of bat speed he had. Parker Goff swings and misses at the first pitch from Wentworth, 0-1. By the way, Aloy's base hit is the second hit for BYU tonight. And Parker takes for an 0-2 count. And Cujillo, in addition to the numbers I just mentioned, third in batting average, too. So he's really a, a well-rounded offensive player for BYU, and this is his first year. 
Goff, three for five in the series, and swings and misses. He's out on strikes after a solo home run in the third. A forward K here in the fifth. One gone for Riker Scout. The Cougs had the lead batter aboard in six of 12 innings last night. They put the lead batter on base in two of five innings tonight. So one gone for Scow. Scow's reached base in seven straight games. 0 for 1 tonight with a strikeout swinging in the third. Hmm. In tight on Riker. He gets out of the way of 92 for ball one. Kuhio Aloy, leadoff single is on first with one gone here in the fifth. 2-1 K-State. By this point last night, BYU was down 6 nothing. Made it all the way back to 6-6 before dropping it in the 12th. Cougs are in a 1-1 one run, one run ball game at the moment. 2-1 here. Top half of the fifth inning. Right-handed hitting left fielder, Riker Scow. A slow roller grounder to the mound. To second for one, over to first, not in time to get Scow. So they get one out on the play, two gone. And Scow grounds out 1-4. Man, I feel, like the second, I feel like the second baseman caught that ball off the bag. Might this be enough to look at? Nah. One of those kind of in the area plays that they usually give you. So Aloy is erased on the base pass on the 1-4. The fielder's choice allows Scout to reach, but now two gone for Crew Robinson. Crew turns on that. But it'll be right field oh, diving wow. catch made by Mick English. English coming forward, maybe not the best break, but sprinting toward and then leaping forward and making a snag with the glove just above the grass. Yeah, if he doesn't catch that, it's a run because it's going to get by him and Riker's going to score from first. So a diving stab to end the inning on a fly out to right for BYU in the fourth. No runs on a hit. There were no errors. One left on base. We're halfway home. We're through four and a half. 2-1 K-State on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. Ben Hansen's long outing and high pitch count both came in his last start. Against Cincinnati, he went six and a third through 107 pitches. Tonight, he is through four and has thrown... 69. He'll face Lotus, Day, and Culpepper. Two, three, four hitters here in the bottom of the fifth. As Lotus fouls back to the netting. 0 oh and 1. Hansen has scattered six hits. Only two runs have scored. BYU has one run on two hits. 2-1 two, Wildcats, bottom five here in Manhattan. Beautiful night for baseball. As the shadows creep across the diamond. From our left to right. The sun setting to our left. The wind blowing out to left field. Hotter day than yesterday, but no threats of those Midwestern thunderstorms that you see so prevalent. It's been a beautiful weekend. Glad that uh, we got the thunderstorms through Wednesday night. I tell you what, Kansas weather. Blink an eye and all of a yep. sudden, there you go. It can be an adventure. The one, two, foul back to the padding. One and two, the count stays. 78 degrees right now. Wind out of the north, eight gusting to 11 is all. Humidity, 49%. Forecast for tomorrow, sunshine and 88. Four o'clock start here, three o'clock back in the mountain time zone. A swing and a miss, and that for Ben Hansen is his first strike out of the night. Strikes out Kyan Lotus to open the fifth. That's a good pitch right there. I love it. A fastball. Is it his first? I think it is. It is, yes. Yeah. Brady Day, one for two tonight. RBI single in his last plate appearance. One for two tonight. Three for eight in the series with two runs batted in. And he's the RBI leader on this team. Left-handed hitting Brady Day takes away. 1-0. Well, for not having maybe his best stuff... Well, Ben's, Ben's grinding, isn't he? It's been really impressive that he's just absolutely competing out there because he doesn't have his best stuff, and you can tell he's not as sharp, but he's given his team a chance, and that's all you can ask for. Especially after a 12-inning game the night before, and you used a lot of guys in the pen, and you're you're thinner than you were normally today. So You kind of need someone yeah, to go you, a little long. You need him to go at least five or six, and he's giving you that chance on not his best day. 
Breaking ball in for strike one. Meantime on the take, and then another take for strike two. So Ben gets ahead. A Brady Day. Day, in addition to leading in RBIs, leads in hits, slugging percentage, multi-hit games, and multi-RBI games. He is the st straw that stirs the Wildcats' drink. Get on the fist, and he just kind of fists that back away out of play. Count what, stays one and two. What number of game is this for them? 53? This is their four? 52nd game. BYU's 51st. Second, and he has 50 RBIs. I'll tell you right pretty there. Pretty good pace. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, but pretty impressive. BYU's RBI leader, Kuhio Aloy, is at 38 for the year. 38? Yes, indeed. The 1 2, a miss away, 2 and 2. Again, back to back to back, left handed bats to open the batting order for head coach Pete Hughes, Jones, Lotus, and Day. Day's the batter with one out, bases clear. Bottom five. We're on the back half of this ball game, the 2 2. That breaking ball is lifted into center field. Crew McChesney on a strong run to his right will be called off by Riker Scow, makes a run to his left and makes the catch at left for out number two. So the fly out, two out for Kalen Culpepper. Culpepper is one for one tonight. An RBI single in the first, a walk, and he was stranded as the bases were left loaded in the third. Culpepper, three for his last 20 at the plate. Two gone, bases clear for the shortstop. Pop up into foul territory and Colin Ruder territory. And he will look it into the leather. Nicely done. With a slight back pedal at the end of it. Nice catch by Colin Ruder as the Wildcats go down in order in the fifth. Strike out, fly out, and a pop up. So we go to the sixth 2 1 ball game. K State leading BYU on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. Welcome back to Toynton Family Stadium here in Manhattan, Kansas. Dimensions here, 325 left field corner, 320 right. Power alleys for 375 each and 390 to straightaway center field. We've got to the top of the sixth inning, top of the order due up. Crew McChesney, Luke Anderson, Easton Jones, one, two, three batters. Jackson Wentworth stays on the hill. And only Wentworth's uh, torso remains in the sunshine, his lower part of his body, the entire pitcher's mound. Now in shadow, the 0-1 delivery to McChesney. 0-2 as Crew swings and misses. Crew struck out swinging in the first, grounded out to first base in the third. 0 for 2 tonight and 0 for 7 on the series. His five-game streak of reaching base ended last night on his 0 for 5 night. 0-2 to Crew. Smacks that to center. Brendan Jones drifts back. Good carry from Crew. A leap and a miss at the wall. It bounces off the wall. Crew around two. And Crew will have himself a leadoff triple here in the sixth. That had a heck of a lot of carry to it. And Jones, a bit of a misplay off the wall. It will go as a triple yeah, for and Crew. Like I, like I said earlier in the broadcast, Balls to left center from left-handed hitters can travel, and that one did right there. And off the back, as soon as they hit that wall, I'm like, okay, it's going to be a triple. But there was a close play at third because when Crew bounced off the bag, it looked like he might have uh, come off, and they and they left the tag on him. But the umpire said that, uh, oh, I mean, he missed that by a half a foot. The leaping stab by Brendan Jones, not able to come down with it. And Crew McChesney does have himself a leadoff triple. So the tying run is 90 feet away here in the sixth. Luke Anderson grounds it foul into the K-State dugout. This is a great time to hit if you're Luke Anderson. Everybody on the infield is playing back. They're conceding. They're saying, hey, we'll give you this run. And so all you got to do is put a ball in play here and get yourself an RBI. Cruz second triple. Sixth extra base hit. Almost half his hits have been extra bases. Six of 14 have been doubles, triples, or home runs now for Crew. Cooks down 2-1, maybe not for long. Luke Anderson, meantime, is in a 1-1 count. McChesney leadoff triple now for the third time in sixth innings. Lead batter aboard for BYU. Six of 12 last night, three of six tonight. Swing and a miss from Luke. The ball below the knees. Just have to relax here. That's a good slider down. Can't swing at that one. Got to see it up. Luke's 0 for 7 against K-State this weekend. He's due, and... A hit for Luke would tie this ball game. The one-two, down on strikes. Another pitch beneath the knees, and.
And again, that's where Wentworth's going to do his damage is down low. And Lucas struck out twice tonight. Yeah, if he'll chase it, he'll just keep throwing it down there. That's where he wants to go. Easton Jones 0 for 7 in the series as well. Strikeout, ground out tonight. Jones with a runner on third. And takes call strike oh, one. See, and that's the one right there you want to attack on. It's that it's the breaking ball that he left up. He's, done, he's left that up twice now to Jones that he's taken for strike one. It's tough when it's strike one. You're not looking for, a, you know, a high breaking ball pitch one. That one's low, and that's cut on and missed by Jones. 0-2 now, so Ma Wentworth gets ahead of Jones. Gives up a leadoff triple to McChesney. Strikes out Anderson and has Jones in an 0-2 hole. Infield comes in now with two strikes. Lifted out of play down the right field line. Yeah, good battle Count there. Count stays 0-2. That's the difference right there. Swing at that pitch. Make him elevate that pitch. Don't chase that breaking ball down. Not a cloud in sight on this Friday night. A swing and a miss for Jones. He's down on strikes. And that'll be his fifth strikeout of the weekend. And from a leadoff triple, no one out to now two gone. And Colin Ruder coming to the plate. McChesney holds on third base after his leadoff triple. Last night's Achilles heel for BYU was runners in scoring position, 1 for 13. Tonight, 0 for 2. So 1 for 15 for the weekend so far. Time for the Cougs to turn it around. Why not Colin Ruder as he takes low ball one? BYU as a team coming into the night. 226 with runners in scoring position. That number's dipped a little bit as a result of tonight's numbers. 0 and 2. 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position. 1 and 1, the count's evened up. Well, it's just a young lineup that's growing, Greg. And, you know, you see the young mistakes here and there, the mental breakdowns. But they, there's a lot of ability there. It's just a growth you got to go through. And Collins' take is a paint job. Slider on the low outside corner right. for a one and, and two see, count. Take that pitch. That's a really good pitch. That's a pitcher's pitch. That's okay. Now you've had to battle with two strikes. The one two. Two gone, one on. Two one ball game. That's in the dirt. Count even at two and two. Jackson Wentworth just threw his 65th pitch of the evening. High pitch count 98. We're top six, 2-1 Wildcats. McChesney on third, and Ruder is down on strikes. Wentworth strikes out the side. Three forward Ks after a leadoff triple from Crew McChesney. We go to the bottom of the sixth, 2-1 Wildcats on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Last night, Kansas State set a program record with 21 strikeouts against BYU in a 12-inning game. Tonight, it's a career-high nine strikeouts for Jackson Wentworth. He has nine Ks through six. Has never had more than eight. Had eight earlier this year against Oklahoma State. His nine Ks helping K-State get out of the sixth. BYU had a leadoff triple, but Jackson, uh, Crew McChesney stayed stranded at third. We now go bottom six for K-State. Parsons, English, and Ingram, five, six, and seven hitters due up. 2-1 ball game, the home team in the lead. Ben Hansen into his sixth inning of work. And again, his long outing is six and a third, so we'll see if we can get Ben into the seventh here tonight. If it stays 2-1, he probably does get into a seventh. 0-1 goes to 1-1 one and one to Jaden Parsons. Parsons this evening is 0 for 2. Flight out to Cooper Vest in the first and reached on a fielder's choice. With the bases loaded in the third. As he grounded it right back up to the mound. And Ben Hansen backhand yeah. stabbed it. it and then threw to home to force out the runner, Kyan Lotus. Remarkable play. Keeping a run from scoring. After one had already come in. Yeah, they were just ready to break that. That inning open and get a, you know, a crooked number there. You know, 2 2 count here to Parsons. Hansen from the hill comes plateward, and that's lashed foul up the le right field, uh, left field line. Jaden Parsons in a 2 2 count. Parsons last night was 2 for 4, so he's 2 for 6 in the series. Had a run on an RBI hit by pitch last night, and 0 for 1 on the base pass. 
tried to steal in the 11th. Was thrown out by Colin Reuter. And it was a strike by Colin. Grounder to Colin Reuter at first. He'll scoop to Ben Hansen, steps on the bag, and one out. As the dugout screen, screams, we work on those every single week. The PFPs right there executed perfectly. And again, although Collins made nice plays at first, don't forget how good a catcher he is. And that, that, that gun out at second last night was, was the latest, latest exhibit. It was unbelievable. It was a perfect throw. Perfectly timed. You need it. Positioned. Nick English, the batter. 0 for 2 tonight. Player flies out to Crew McChesney. And that was after a leanoff single, right? Yeah. He, uh, Parsons let off the inning with yeah. a single and, and was thrown out. Throw him out, which gives you a chance. 0-1 in the air to left center. McChesney over and calls for it, makes the catch. Two gone quickly here in the sixth. But again, I thought last night might be the night the Cougs put a dent in that number, but the Wildcats have won every game they've led after six this year. Well, They'll lead after six here tonight. That's going to be tonight. You know, we're just inching toward it. Yeah. Two gone for Chuck Ingram. And by the way, all three Nick English outs have gone to Crew McChesney tonight. Ingram is grounded out 5-3 and 4-3. Hansen delivers strike one taken by Ingram. Ingram's modest three-game hit streak is on hold on 0 for 2 night. Oh one one from Hansen to Ingram. Foul to the netting, 0-2. Something you don't see in every batting order, the, the two leading home run hitters for K-State are the seven and eight hitters in Ingram and Pelletier. Yeah, you really don't see that very often. <laughs> 0-2 oh, to Ingram. Strikeouts leader for the Wildcats. Has not struck out tonight. He's probably due to K. The 0-2. Oh, high and away from Ben Hansen. One and two. Last night, one for five with a strikeout. His 69th strikeout of the year. Again, that paces the Wildcats in that category. One for seven in the series. Ingram, the left fielder. A one, two. Stays alive. Fouls back away. One and two. The count will stay. Ingram is a compact 6 one two twenty five. 225 Wichita State transfer. We call him Sturdy. <laughs> it's a great nickname. <laughs> the one two. Stays alive, grounds it to the netting yeah, to the a, right of the K State dugout. A ton of Wichita State players that left last week, last year because they had a coaching change. A bunch of guys throughout the Big Twelve, a couple guys down to TCU. They've been everywhere. They had a some really good players that left. Ingram transferring in state. From Wichita State to K-State, the 1-2 to Ingram. And there's the strikeout. So that'll do it for K-State here in the sixth. 1-2-3, they go down in order. And Ben Hansen's retired the last seven Wildcats in a row. We go to the seventh, 2-1 ball game. K-State leading BYU on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.